from Mechanical Pros. I'm here with Bill and we're talking about gas regulators. Gas regulators been around about 200 years and it feels like, uh, you know, the one of the things that's the most simple can always be uh, the, the problem that holds back a project. You are correct and they are simple. Gas regulators, we have here mainline gas regulator and that takes care of our, our first stage of reduction off of our meter. So how would you know this is a main line? It's by the model number, and it's also a lockup, what we call a lockup regulator. Okay. So that when it gets overpressurized, it will lock up with no flow. Whereas on an appliance regulator such as this, a lot of times they will allow some flow even when there's no usage okay. needed just for the pressure coming in. Okay. You have line pressure regulators, you have uh, your appliance regulators, and then we also have an appliance gas valve. On the regulators, like I say, they're simple. It's a pressure regulator, which means you have pressure coming in at, at one pressure, and you're going to change it to have a different pressure coming out. And that's done by the use of the springs. And the springs are located in this chamber, and you put tension on that spring to operate the diaphragm that's underneath there. Okay. We got a diaphragm in here, in, the, in between the sandwich here. Mm -hmm. A screw set. It's a screw set. That, yep. And that's for adjustment? That adjusts tension on the spring because you have to have tension on the spring to overcome pressure that's coming in through the valve to regulate a lower pressure coming out. So you have two pressures going against each other to create a lower pressure. Okay. And you have different tensions of springs depending on which pressure you want on the outlet side. Okay. So do you have a lot of flexibility in uh, the pressures you can, you can regulate to? Based uh, on the uh, just the, the the frame size, right? You've got uh, they have a chart that gives you what pressure you can have from anywhere from one inch of water column on the leaving side uh, up to about uh, probably fifteen to sixteen inches of water column, and that's with a two pound inlet. Uh, our main pressure is usually two pounds coming in. Uh, then we reduce down to water column pressure to take care of our appliances. If you were replacing a piece of equipment and it it uh, it required more more gas, mm -hmm. could it be as simple as swapping out a different spring? It for, could for more for more gas pressure. Or would you need to change the whole? The it whole depends body? on what you've got, John, because the the regulators you have a spring tension and you also have an orifice size. Okay. Because you have a pressure coming in, you're going to reduce that pressure based on an orifice size that you're pushing that gas through at that pressure. If you have a, a small orifice, you wouldn't be able to, to increase your pressure on the outlet side because you have the same thing coming in. And it's, it has a range and, and the range is usually three to, to six inches of water column is the, is the range within a spring okay. on that. Boilers, they like constant gas mm -hmm. at a constant pressure and they wanna have that continuous flow to combust. Mm -hmm. And so this this regulator is stacking it up almost like an expansion valve right. and then allowing that certain flow to go through and uh, regulating that constant flow. That's correct. correct. Okay. So this one, you were telling me earlier, you know, you, you cannot see through this thing. If you were to put your eye up to it, mm -hmm. you see a wall through right. there. And it's different than this regulator, which, which, which you can see through there and you can see the, the plunger. Tell me the difference there, Bill. Well, it's got a chamber so it can lock up and the inlet and the outlet are separated. In this valve, there's not a big separation. The only separation is the valve mechanism that comes up in seats in there. With these, they're, they've got lower pressure coming in. All right, and so there's not that big a deal at the appliance on that. Uh, it's not going to go anywhere, and you have less area to contend with in your piping system. Whereas with the line pressure regulator, you could in increase pressure down through a line, and uh, it could be very dangerous to have an overpressurized gas line in an area. I know uh, a lot of places, the insurance company won't let you run a certain pressure above inside the building. Yeah. Uh, and on larger buildings where they have rooftop equipment, they'll put the, the gas piping on the roof and they can use a higher pressure using smaller pipe, mm -hmm. which is more cost effective. I think it's 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. and I think if you do run inside it, it's got to be welded. Yep. And when yep. you get up above that, you, it is all welded pipe. Our, our gas systems are in, uh, they're sized according to the pressure that you're using and the uh, cubic feet per hour of consumption. And uh, that's the two things that needs to be considered uh, when you're installing the pipe size is how long are you running your pipe to get to where you're going. And that's why we have the line regulators 
So you can have a line pressure that might be serving several pieces of equipment, and then you'd have your regulators at each piece of equipment. Is there a, a certain orientation they need to be in? You know, can you put them horizontal, vertical? Does it make a difference? These Indoor. that we have here are for a horizontal pipe run. Okay. All right. They do have another style, which has the the seat uh, is it can be in a vertical position because this can be configured differently from what it is here. This can only be configured in this in this position, and it needs to be in a horizontal position. They have another one that has the, the valve body. It can be in a vertical position, and it comes over, and this will be sitting in a horizontal position. This piece here needs to sit in a horizontal, but there's, it's a two-piece application that's made together where it can can uh, be moved in a, in a different apparatus. Has it, and what about indoor, outdoor? Is there any difference between? Indoor and outdoor, uh, sometimes they'll take the outdoor and they'll put a, a different paint on it to resist some of the weather. But as far as the, the regulators, they can be either indoor or outdoor. They do have a vent opening. All of them have a vent opening on the top side of the diaphragm in case you have a rupture. If you're indoor, that needs to be piped to the outside. Okay. Uh, in some cases, they will let you put a, a vent limiter on it, which will limit the amount of gas that it will expel. And if you're outside, they want you to put a vent a preventer on there so that you don't get trash down in there because it's going to be it's going to be in this position. So water could get in there or yeah. debris, and they don't want to get that inside the valve. But that needs to be open to the atmosphere so it has a reference point. Yep. Gotcha. And so if you were to, to vent this, take this and pipe it outside, could you, you just use uh, PVC or do you need to use copper? Copper or tubing is copper the best tube. thing to use uh, because of that. Uh, if you've got, uh, say something happens within the building, uh, the copper tubing is going to withstand Any kind some, of, some temperature changes. Right. Yeah. And if there is, if it happens to be a fire or something, uh, it's not going to deteriorate and then add to the problem okay. if, if your gas is being expelled so, in the room. So don't use PVC. Don't use PVC. Uh, use copper tube. And uh, w one other thing from a safety standpoint, don't ever use your gas regulator as a shutoff valve. Always use uh, right. the, the main or find a, find a main for a shutoff. It, it can uh, uh, prevent flow, but there's no way to guarantee that. You also need to have, a, like you say, your shutoff valve and a strainer to make sure you get no debris in there, and then you go into your regulator. Uh, on your adjusting, uh, you adjust uh, clockwise to increase the pressure and counterclockwise to decrease, to decrease the pressure okay. on the thing. And they're, they're, they are uh, indicated with, with what you have, your inlets and your outlets, has a flow arrow, make sure you put it in the right direction. And of course, you have the vent that's labeled. So all the things are labeled on it to help you to install it properly. But the big thing to me is making sure that you, you're sized correctly and that uh, you have enough gas, uh, especially if you're using more than one appliance off of a line regulator. Whichever one is first is going to get the most flow. And I uh, have seen cases where we had pipe run too small and the last piece of equipment does not work properly because it does not get enough gas. A good rule of practice is that on a gas appliance, whatever your connection is, your pipe size should be one size larger. And on your gas regulators, the outlet piping in any length should be at least one size larger to give you the volume that you need because you've taken a, a higher pressure and reduced it down. Therefore, you're not going to get as much flow of your material. So you have a lower pressure, you need more volume, upsize that pipe one size per that connection to the appliance. Correct. Gotcha, that's a great tip. One other tip that I have for you is if you're gonna be uh, using dope the thread to the regulator, only dope the, the male thread of it rather than uh, doping the actual uh, frame of the regulator. Because when you push, put your, your dope on here and then you thread it, you're pushing that, that, that dope into the regulator and it can get in and trash that diaphragm. <laughs> and give you a uh, false reading there. Anything else we need to know, Bill? Just uh, always make sure that you're using all the safety precautions you need dealing with gas. Um, anytime you're working with gas, uh, make sure you, you know where your shutoff valves are. And uh, before you open up a system, make sure your valves are closed. Okay. What about gas freezing? We always tend to run into that. Gas, the regulator freezing in the winter. You got any, got any tricks or solutions for that? Uh, hair dryer but no flame. Yeah. 
has to be dry heat if you're going to try to unthaw anything with it that's a gas. Yeah. You know, it'd be a dry heat. Yeah, it's that, it's that moisture that's getting in there. And uh, a rule that I heard is that for every 100 pounds that you are decreasing, uh, you're going to get about six to eight uh, degrees in temperature change there. So, and when it's really cold out and you're, you're flowing a lot of gas through that regulator, you got a, a temperature difference through there. And it's almost like an expansion valve mm -hmm. in the refrigeration cycle. I mean, it really is acting like one and it, it can, it can cause, uh, uh, it to freeze up. There's no real great solution to, to prevent something from freezing. Well, um, I haven't seen it much, John. I've seen it more with propane. When you mm -hmm. have a propane tank, uh, and you can get frost on the outside of those, and it tells you what your level is of propane yeah. inside. Yeah, you know you're right. Because out. you have expansion there of that gas, it's it's expanding because of temperature, and uh, so it's it's doing that. But you just need to take all your precautions, safety precautions, when dealing with gas. Uh, always have confident people with the knowledge that they need to have with that. It's it's not a do-it-yourself job. Uh, get professionals. To yeah. working with your gas. Always great to hang out with you, Bill. P appreciate your help. So hit that like, hit that subscribe, and come back and check us out again on Mechanical Pros.